Aloha mai kako. You are watching Hawaii Political Reporter. Thank you for watching Hawaii Political Reporter. On tonight's show, chemo on his clean oceans bill, part two of the industrialization of Hawaii with Harry Kim. Donna will tell us about her experience with solar power and a special trip to India where the local population finds itself in a similar situation to Hawaii County with outside forces trying to exploit their natural resources. We're here with a very interesting gentleman that was a tugboat captain who's actually writing a new bill. His name's Kimo, and I want to want you to hear what he has to say. Kimo, tell us. Yeah, hi folks, and aloha. My name is Kimo, and I was a tugboat captain for a very large nationwide company, and we transported oil and fuel throughout the state of Hawaii. And the issue that I've been having is to try to protect our harbors from potential black oil pollution every time we have a load of black oil product that's transported into our outside island harbors. Only on the island of Oahu you have to have a containment boom. Well that's one of the first steps of our organization and the organization is speakout808.org and it has also plans for our development. The development is, is that first we protect our harbors and we protect our coastlines from any debris that comes from the tsunami from Japan, we also have to get that, and also the, the processing of renewable energy. This is another area that we are trying to develop. So we're here at this meeting now to try to get ideas of what people are interested in and where their focus is as far as renewable energy goes. And that's our direction right now. And I want to tell Kimo, this is what every single person needs to do is get involved. This is what it's about, because we can change things if we get involved. We are here to run our government, not here to let our government run us. Absolutely. This guy's, sh you need to look this guy up. Run the tape back and, and get his uh, website. Let's tell, what was it? www.speakout808.org. See, this is, this is a tugboat guy, and he is coming to you to help us, all of us. This is where it comes from. This is how our forefathers set it out, where we, the people, help to work together to make things happen. And in order, in order to make this a law, you have to write a bill. Well, I had to learn how to write a bill. I learned how to write a bill, and I wrote the bill. Hopefully in January it will get passed through the legislation, and it will be a requirement that any fuel barge or any oil tanker that comes into any outside island port with a black oil product has to have a containment boom to prevent any spills polluting our harbors and our coastlines. So I don't know if you can see it here but there's a picture it's really cool it's a simple way to keep the oil so if there is a spill they can recapture it this is a fantastic thing. And I also have a petition for those of you who would like to sign it I've got it Right here. Well, I bet if we go to your website, we can sign it too, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Chemo, thank you very, very much. Thank you very much for the time. And One more time? It is. www.speakout808.org. You can even read the Harbor Bill and all of our plans for development. Thank you and aloha. Aloha mai kako. You are watching Hawaii Political Reporter. What we try hide on He know your motor from the reason You headed to a So uh, just a couple things about what she said um, They've taken six million dollars out of that fund And used it for road security offices Or whatever they wanted And when we went and asked for the health study There's no rules you know, and that is the, the, what this has been like from day one. And, uh, you know, it's time that we, we do something about that. The next speaker has been, been in this ball for this very long time, John Olson. He's going to talk about the emergency response plan.
of electricity. I grew up in an area where well drilling was uh, common. Um, so when they go into techno speak, I do in fact understand what they're saying. So uh, when I got involved with this, uh, full out, full on, uh, was on the night of the blowout. My house uh, sat on a little. Turn the lights off. Turn the lights off. Turn the lights off. They're entertaining. Uh, uh, across from the across from the plant, and uh, I was sitting in my living room with some friends, and uh, there was a glass wall behind them, and I was looking virtually at KS8 when it exploded. First time I've ever seen a four by eight sheet of glass bow in about six inches. Um, figuratively speaking, they rolled over my rock, and I'm not happy. So I guess that it, the history, of course, is the history, of course, is nice for the, for the people who, who don't have it or would like to have it. But I think more importantly is what are we going to do about it? What are our options? And we have a number of options. Uh, on the technical side, uh, they have failed under FEMA, Federal Emergency Management Agency's Rules of Engagement to properly inform the community. Um, to properly demonstrate that they have emergency response plans, contingency plans, um, for, for the possible upset conditions at the plant. That's federal law. They have not done that. Uh, I would think anybody out there, if I asked for a show of hands, has ever uh, had the civil defense come by and tell you what to do in the case of, of an event, or what those events would be and how you should respond. So they violated the law. They're, we're working on, a, on taking that up directly. Um, beyond that, there is, of course, what we're already doing, and I urge you to continue doing it, and that is to inform your neighbors, because I think the majority of your neighbors do not recognize the danger that they are in. Uh, the people who are the newbies, you know, those of you who've been here less than 30 years, uh, <laughs> uh, aside from wishing that you'd all go home, not that that isn't realistic, but, <laughs> well, I, I can get into that later, but I, I actually welcome you because Puna has always attracted the yeses, we're the yeses, uh, whether you showed up yesterday or 30 years ago. Um, they don't, re they don't recognize the, the dangers that uh, the geothermal presents to them. And they probably don't recognize the fact that they are entitled under law to be protected. It is a simple civil rights issue. Uh, the system as it now stands is violating our civil rights. So, uh, information is power. Uh, you need to become informed. I believe the most current draft of an emergency response plan that was done by the Environmental Protection Agency. I think that, is that on the website? Yeah, okay. So, I'm sorry. Um, it, that is on the website, and I would suggest that you read it if for no other reason than your own self defense. And the other point would be to disseminate that information to your neighbors. Um, they have a right to know. And uh, we will uh, work along here. And uh, I don't think it's going to take very long before we get some reaction. It'll be interesting to see what the reaction is to this. Uh, they've managed to get by for a very long time. Probably um, we mostly Come, came to accept that uh, everything would remain in the status quo. That clearly is not the plan now. Uh, there's a whole list of issues, far too many to go into today. But uh, we're, thanks to Bob and others who are working with him, they're getting the information out there so it's available to you. And uh, I think that's about all of that. Uh, Try and throw at you. You know, when you have a hit full of 22 years, 23 years of stuff, it's kind of hard to see.
sit through it in the evening and decide what, what is really relevant to you. Um, and this is pretty much irrespective of whether you think that the current geothermal or geothermal as it might is a thought, is it a good or bad idea. I mean, this is a, just simply a, a matter of self-defense. You're here uh, and you need to be informed about the danger that they have put you in. Thank you.
that I hope that don't sound just a pipe dream. Because that is what we work for. It was a simple thing of all police, fire, and anyone else that in community that had to work with everyone else for your safety. If you did not trust us, how can we expect you to listen to what we're advising you to do? You know, to me, it was just that simple. I don't care what the emergency was, whether it be the geothermal blowout, or a tsunami, or earthquake, or whatever, or the huge fires that we had in Pune. And I said that during the inauguration of that, I know that it's the most special thing that we can ask of you. I know that once you give it to us, that we've got to work every single day to keep your trust. And I also know how easy it is to lose that trust. And here I am going to ask you of the hardest thing of you. I need you to trust that there are people, as you know, that will try to do what is right, including this issue. I told Ms. Patricia, I need you to back off a little bit in regards to how this is approached. For the simple reason that we need the support of many people to get where we need to get. The things of this island is done the right way, regardless of what it is. So I will ask this of you. And I ask this to live on the estates meeting two nights ago. I used different terms then. I told Mr. Patricia and those others there to pull in your horns. Somehow, and I don't have the magic answer, and I know there are many answers, but somehow we've got to get people to talk. Somehow, we've got to get people to listen to each other instead of going to meetings with just positions. I will say this openly, and I've said it publicly many times. I'm very sorry for the way, and I said this at the Health Commission meeting, my mental commission, when they tried to pass a no EIS, EAS. I told them, I do not understand why we are making the people who have suffered because of our incompetence the bad guy. And those of you that have been labeled a bad guy I know what I'm talking about. I do not understand, and I've said it to my bosses at the time, of the atrocities that were happening at the Natural Energy Lab experimental project, so-called experimental project, that was supposed to last by contract only two years and was finally closed by the order of the governor total maybe eight years later. And I guarantee you it was closed because of the uproar of people and the health effects, the total disregard of plane safety issues in regards to how a plane should be run. They had no abatement system. They had no way of getting rid of residues except to spill out into an open pond. And those of strictly environmental knows how atrocious that is. But outside of that the atrocity for eight long years, the good people of Lilani, and I do need the good people, and let me tell you why I'm good people. They tried of every single way to bring it to the attention of government officials and DGB or Orland officials what is happening to them. I saw every single damn way of disregarding it, including at the present time. For this, I apologize to you because I am part of that government. There was a frustration of what was happening. And I said to some people in the line of my ignorance of geothermal. I'm born and raised in the most beautiful place of God's given earth right here in Puna. Yeah. And I hope they bury me. Well, they don't have to bury me. It's <laughs> still my ashes somewhere. <laughs> and along with that, and I've said it to many parts of the world, 
It is the most beautiful place of God's given earth because of the land, the air, and the water, and the people that live there. And to this day, I you know I believe in that. I do not understand, and I'll make it quite simple to you, I do not understand, as I said in the health commission meeting, why we are treating the people who or we are affecting their lifestyle, their health of past and present, their frustration as the bad guy. All I have ever asked is people to look at what has happened at the natural energy lab. It was on that day in the early 80s that I got a call from a couple that lived at Alani and asked me to have dinner with them. Because I'm such an anti-social son of a gun, I said no. <laughs> and I am really. My best friends are birds and flowers and trees and fish and those things. The people who know me know me, know that. It's not that I'm anti-social, I just find my greatest peace with those things of earth. I did ask them, you know, what is this about? And they just said, we just want you to come here and see what we have to deal with almost every night, depending on the wind, in regards to us having dinner or living here. So I went, long you know, no dinner necessary, I'll come. But obviously, graciously, they served coffee and some snacks. I sat down with them, and the smell was atrocious. I don't know what the level was. You know, if I would have guessed now, it'd probably be in the 20 to 30 to 40 parts per billion. The Department of Health irritates me to some degree when they classify these things as nuisance. I used to tell them, you know what that sounds like to me? Asking a guy to stand knee deep in shit and tell him from the shore, don't worry about it, it's not toxic. <laughs> but I gave him to people because I needed their support. Because a lot of people outside of here look at you as just a bunch of people that don't want your way of life disturbed. There was a sewage plant in Hilo in Kyokaha. I'm sure some of you know where that was. And for years and years, the people of Kyokaha, this is Hawaiian homes area, complained of the smell. And you know what? The, response of government was all of these fancy terms on levels of what is nuisance or toxic or whatever. And said so the level of parts per billion is only on the average of three to seven parts per billion. And that's correct. I used to tell my friends, drive by there and tell me what you think. And they go, you, go, you know it's coming up, so you gotta close your window, you hold your breath, because it's sucking you pass. Well, that's only three to five to six to seven parts per billion. This is my home. This is my government. They're like yours. And you get hurt that we disregard the people of Kyoka. That simple. We disregard those people because we put a sewage plant right across the street from where people live and tell them it's only three to five to six to seven parts per billion. I hear the same thing here at Geodon. I cannot understand why we treat you like that. I cannot understand why we disregard so I like money too, I got 30 cents in my pocket. <laughs> but even with money, there has to be rules of conduct, right? And my wife and kids and good friends tell me, well, you're a naive son of a gun, and I guess I am. My son and I had a kind of lengthy argument for the first time in our lives, really, but he was trying to persuade me not to run. And he said, you always look at the bright side of people. Maybe, maybe not, but I choose to look at things that way.
is Donna Fisher and I have Amazon Power Plus. It's a solar energy company. I've been providing clean energy for over 20 years now and I know it works and we can do it. We can make this island totally sustainable on clean energy and that's why I'm here because geothermal is not clean. Shipping uh, electricity to the other islands for so that they can have it for lower prices than we can is not feasible not financially not logically we would still be paying higher prices than anywhere else in the country we do now and we would continue to and we don't have to so donna i think i had my booth at makuu market and i was right next to this beautiful lady and she had solar panels and she was pumping water right there and she had a solar oven and she was cooking right there beside me where i was in the i was actually vending and I'm looking over, and this wonderful lady's cooking right there using sun power. You can do it. You can cook. You can wash your clothes. You can light your house, pump your water. You can do everything you need to with the sun and the wind and the elements that are given to us freely and cleanly. And it's really not that difficult? No, it's not difficult at all. I've been doing it for 20 years. Thank you, Donna. It's one of the most serene and sacred places in India, Niamgiri Hills, home to the Dongria Khand tribe. For years, thousands of tribal people here have been relocated by a London-based conglomerate, the Vedanta Group. It wanted to mine into mountains considered sacred to extract the aluminum ore bauxite for use in its refineries specially built nearby. But the social and environmental costs have been high. The income source of people from 350 villages have been destroyed. So what will these people do? They depend on the land and forest for their livelihood, and they believe that their land is their mother, father and God. They have a deep respect for their land. But for now, the Indian government has kicked Vedanta out, saying the group has violated forest conservation and environmental protection laws. While some say India could stimulate its economy by accessing its natural resources, the people in this community believe that their land is sacred and they're not going to let any foreign corporations come in and destroy it. Prafil Mahaji says that Vedanta took two acres of his land, promised him compensation, but that he never received anything. And it's not just his community's environment that has been destroyed. He says that the actions of the company have damaged the well-being of local people. There's been an increase in pollution which has led to many health issues. We've been experiencing eye problems, skin problems, TB, and also a lot of breathing problems. Vedanta did not respond to our request for comment, but has said in the past that it believes it can make significant contributions to the people of the area and bring development to the region. Critics, however, say that hasn't happened. Most of the local people that we've spoken to feel that they've had promises made by the company that have just been broken and that they, not only have they not received development from the company but fundamentally they do not want development from the company. All they want is to be allowed to live their lives in peace. The confrontation has received attention from high profile figures like movie director James Cameron who compared the dispute to a real life avatar. Vedanta are trying to appeal the decision by the Indian government in a bid to allow them to continue their work. But for now, local people are celebrating their victory in preserving their ancestral land. We've figured out who will work towards our development and who will not. We want to live the way we did before Vedanta came here. And it seems like they might have the chance to do just that. The Dongria Khans say they'll fight for what's theirs, no matter who they're up against. Priya Shridhar, RT, Orissa, India. Thanks for watching. Join us again tomorrow. We'll continue our series, and we have other important segments. In 1913, the money power of the country was taken away from the people, but it was given up in the Federal Reserve Act. The Federal Reserve is no more federal than Federal Express. Ba, 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 ba. You try a high down, this sure a freedom, ma. You seek agenda, we know you know you entire American. You come poverty, the American Constitution. 1913, corrupt in the system. Devalue dollar, hyperinflation. The Federal Reserve, controlled by Lucifer.